praise. Can I get a witness tonight? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. We are blessed tonight, honey. Yes, sir. Dr. Shane Perry is in the yes, house tonight. He is. We love you, man of God. Bless Thank you. God for Bless you. you. I know that you are now the pastor. Excuse me, Pastor Shane Perry. Oh, yes, Perry. sir. Yes, pastor. Yes. You got a roll, pastor. You got to get a little, get a little, a little sound to it. To it. <laughs> pastor <laughs> Shane Perry and the pastoring the New Beginnings Church. Yes, sir. And, and tell us about your church and where it's at. Um, our church, New Beginnings Church, our motto is we're loving a great God developing great people and expanding the greatness of God's kingdom. And that's our vision. Yes. It's not only to build on a, as we would say in the leadership conferences coming up, not only to build locally, but to think globally. Mm -hmm. And I think every church, we're, we're on the Treasure Coast, which is a smaller part of Florida, a, a town called Port St. Lucie. Mm -hmm. But I believe even in Port St. Lucie, you can make a global impact. Absolutely. Yes, and uh, our church is uh, getting ready to move into a 25,000 square foot building. That's beautiful. And yes, how old sir. is it? You're selling church all? is a year and six months old. The church is a year and six months old. Yes, it's sir. getting ready to move into a brand new facility and you're pastoring in a small town. I think that's so important because we that's pastored true. in a small, very, a very small town. Yes, sir. It didn't even have a T. It was just a very, small very, own. Really? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, couldn't fold a T right at the time. But we have a great God, and I think sometimes people who are pastoring in small towns or in small situations yes, have a tendency to give themselves an excuse not to think great thoughts. Come on, Bishop. Ooh, but yes, that sir. has not been the case with you. Nope. You've dared yes, to make a difference. What What is the compelling force that has driven you to have a great vision and to flourish out of a relatively small area? Well, you know, Bishop, uh, if I could have picked the town that I wanted to go to, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been Port St. Lucie. Okay. <laughs> but, but God led me to that area. I'm kind of a big city guy. I'm from a small area, but mm -hmm. I like big cities. I mm -hmm. like flourishing cities. Right. That's why I live in West Palm Beach, but I pastor <laughs> in Port <laughs> St. Lucie. Right, right, right. And, uh, but, but really, <coughs> I, I look at it like David. The, the psalmist said in Psalms 133 and 1, we use this as a fellowship scripture. He says, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Right. And this scripture is always used when all the pastors from all the different denominations You're come right. together. But, yeah. but we really miss it because it's a scripture on vision. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, most scholars believe that David wrote this psalm before he became the unified king of Israel, mm -hmm. which means he looked out on an empty field mm -hmm. and said, behold, mm -hmm. which is a Hebrew word that means vision mm -hmm. or to see in the mind. Mm -hmm. And in essence, he said, behold, how great it's going to look Mm -hmm. when God brings this thing together. Yeah, 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 and yeah, that's yeah. always yeah. been my, my mindset, is that I can look at something that looks bad, but I can see the good in it. Yes, yes. And I believe that, that God will take the ugliest situations in your life mm -hmm. to cause them to give birth to the greatest situations. Yes, Love sir. I, I don't want to circumvent here, but I just felt something drop in my spirit. You uh -oh. know, Leah was unattractive, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. Rachel was fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Rachel was so good looking that, that when uh, her future husband saw her, mm -hmm. he lifted up his voice and wept. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. you've both seen my wife. She's beautiful. But I mm -hmm. promise you, she didn't make me cry <laughs> when I first saw her. <laughs> now, I cried if she left. But he, right, 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 right. He went and rolled the stone away and watered her flocks. Mm -hmm. In other words, when an unemployed man will get a job for you, you know you look good. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. But Leah, on the other hand, was unattractive. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But there was a difference between the two. Rachel, mm -hmm. her womb was closed. Come on, yes. come on. Which means a beautiful thing doesn't always produce. Uh-huh, 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 right, right. Leah, Leah was ugly. Mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. fact, her name in the Hebrew means wild cow, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which means her father, who prophetically had to name his child, looked at his baby the moment that she broke the matrix and said, mm, wild cow. <laughs> But she used her dysfunction, if you will, as a liability. Yes. Mm -hmm. And God said when he saw that she was hated, mm -hmm. I, I want to tell somebody out there, you may be Come feeling on. hated or, this, or, or you're going through situations where people say your vision will never work. Come God on. puts a spotlight on people that are hated. Mm -hmm. The Bible said he opened up her yes. womb. Yes, yes, he did. And she gave birth to four children in rapid succession. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is the season mm -hmm. that God's about to take the ugliest situations in your life and cause them to produce. Oh, oh. I wish somebody just point their hand to that television screen and say, Lord, take that ugly marriage and cause it to produce. Yeah. Take that ugly family situation and cause it to produce. Take that ugly financial situation, that ugly past that I've been through, turn it around and yeah. cause it yeah. to produce. Yeah. 
in my life. Glory to God. Glory and so to God. Port St. <laughs> Lucie looked a little ugly to me. <laughs> now, when you put it all together, it's the, the Treasure Coast is large, but the city looked a little ugly to me. <laughs> but I said, you know what, God? I feel you leading me here. <laughs> and I believe you're giving me a vision. See, people always call the city Port St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. I said, God, you're going to give us such an impact that the world's going to know how to say our city right. <laughs> right, right. And that's right. what God does. Right. In fact, one, one scripture says when God stands up, it's a Hebrew word that means to validate, mm -hmm. which means when God fights on your behalf, when he stands up for you, he validates yes, the he call that's on your Come life. On. Come on. Yes. And I believe that God's doing something out of oh, Port yes. St. Lucie oh, Bishop. Yes. When, on, when God sent you there, the, the, the thing about being sent yes, and not just, as old folks say, not just went. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. You were sent into that situation. You had evangelized for how many years? Oh, since I was 19, I'm 40 now, so. That's a long time, 21 years. 21 years. 21 years, you had evangelized. Yes, sir. Uh, a very strong, in-demand preacher, preaching all over the country, uh, admired, revered, preaching all the conferences, crusades. Now you're pastoring. Yes, sir. How different is preaching from pastoring? <sighs> Bishop, I always say preaching is the easy part. Yeah. Because when you're a pastor, you have to be willing to, to deal with people. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I've learned something as a pastor. Uh, I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. Actually, Clay, Alabama. And I tell people, when you're from a town called Clay, when your town's named after dirt, <laughs> you know you're from the country. <laughs> and, and, and in the country, we don't, we don't take out the trash because there is no garbage, man. You burn the trash. You burn the trash. <laughs> and then you feed the slop to the dogs. Mm -hmm. And then you take, uh, you know, rinds, like watermelon rinds, yeah. kale rinds, and you throw them down the hill. Mm -hmm. You say, go throw it down the hill. We had a hill. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, I, you know, you got to switch the hill up mm -hmm. because you don't want to keep throwing it down the same hill. Well, I switched the hill up one time, and I threw some watermelon rinds down another hill beside the house. Mm -hmm. And haphazardly, these seeds fell into the ground. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time, I get blessed more on accident than most people do on purpose. Yeah, but yeah, that's come another message. <laughs> but... But these seeds just happened to fall on the ground. And, and, and just a few weeks later, I'm walking by and I see watermelons growing everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the reason why is because those seeds had found themselves in soil over the septic tank. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And I learned something about uh -oh. God. And when you're pastoring, yeah. you got to be able to deal with mess. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Because the mess is the fertilizer <laughs> that causes the seed to grow. Yes, yes. And, oh, man. I, I, yeah, I'm trying on. to behave, but I, I got to tell somebody out there, you, you're in a bad situation. I yes. know you are. Yeah. In fact, the Bible says beautiful for situation is Mount Zion. And the word beautiful there actually means elevation in the Hebrew, mm -hmm. which means your situation was never designed to take you out, but it was designed to take you higher. Come on. And so you may be in some mess right now, but God's getting ready to use that turmoil in your life to cause the seeds that's in your spirit to produce the vision that God has for you. Well, I feel the power that, of God that's getting released. That, you know what? That, that is God's word. That is God's word for somebody right now. We're, we're just a couple of weeks from our conference our pastor than leadership conference and and you know what it's like you've been there before yes, sir. Uh, I've already been praying you don't wait till you get to the conference no. to start no. praying we've got thousands of pastors and their leaders yes. just their key people that they're leaning on and depending on exposing them to the same opportunities in fact my own people that I lean on are going to be training the people that they lean on mm -hmm. so that they can do those kinds of exploits and those those kinds of things that are beyond just preaching yes, sir. how important is it to have mentoring and instruction to develop even the gifted person mm. needs developing. I, I, I really have to be careful because I want to fight back the tears. I'm, 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 I'm going to expose myself a little bit. I was sitting off the set with, with Pastor Chris and I leaned over to him and I said, the things that Bishop Jakes has spoken into my life have been so transformational. Now, I've been preaching for over 21 years. <laughs> But it's something to be preaching and be a wonder all over the country as an evangelist mm -hmm. and go home and your life is a wreck. Right. right. And it's because I was born, you know this, Bishop, mm -hmm. I was born an illegitimate child of a rape. Mm -hmm. Oh, it got real quiet in here. Y'all okay. ain't never been through nothing, I, I guess. But, mm -hmm. but I was born in this very difficult situation and mm -hmm. I never had a father, mm -hmm. which means I rebelled against male authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I came into the church that I started understanding male authority. Mm -hmm. And when I came in contact with you, Bishop, I heard my father's voice. Yeah. 
Bless you. And what's powerful about that, and, and I, what I believe that every person that comes in contact, whether directly mm -hmm. or in a conference setting, mm -hmm. they get to hear the Father's voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason why this is so important as it relates to vision, as we were talking about before, fatherlessness, which is mm -hmm. something I deal with, I'm writing a book on it, I just started a program to help the fatherlessness kids of the world. Mm -hmm. But fatherless is a word, it's twofold. One translation in the Hebrew literally means lacking supervision. Right, mm -hmm. right. A Jewish father, his job was to get a divine revelation of his child's future, mm -hmm. name the child for where they're going, mm -hmm. and supervise them to meet their mm -hmm. destiny. Mm -hmm. So when you grow up gifted mm -hmm. and anointed, you hide behind the gift. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. I think, and yes. you know, I, I'm just real. Uh, you were there, First Lady. I'm, I'm sitting with my wife, and we'd been at the Potter's house, and, and Bishop, you hit me with a punch in my ribs. <laughs> you yeah. said, your problem is, mm -hmm. and you always know what daddy's talking when he says your problem is. <laughs> he said, your problem is you hide behind your giftedness. Mm -hmm. And to hear a father speak that word, it hurts you, but you say, wait a minute. He wouldn't have told me that if he didn't love me. Right, right. Because everybody else says, oh, you preach so good mm -hmm. and you're so anointed. Mm -hmm. and come back and run a revival. Mm -hmm. You said, no, 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 you got to work on something. Mm -hmm. And I heard that voice. Why? Because you see my destiny. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with it is sometimes the name that was spoken was wrong. Mm -hmm. yes. If you look at Ben Anoi, when he was born, yes. his mother died giving birth to mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Ben Anoi means son of my pain. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And you got to be careful what you call your situation when you're in pain. I'm, I'm you got to be careful what you say when you're hurt mm -hmm. because you can circumvent and wreck your future right. based off what you say when you're in pain. Because mm -hmm. really, pain is just a part of the process. Right, 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 right. So she dies giving birth, names in Beninoe. His father steps in prophetically, changes his name to Benjamin. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Benjamin, the son of my right hand, a Hebrew mm -hmm. idiom mm -hmm. that means the son of my power. Mm -hmm. So in an instant, God took his pain and turned it into his Come power. On, I feel my preacher Come coming on. on. I, got, Come on I, I want to tell somebody out there watching around the world. Yeah. You're watching, you're in pain, you're hurting, you're struggling in your life. God told me to tell you he's about to take your pain and turn it into your power. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to be wasted. Nothing. No battle that you've been through, no struggle that you've been through, no fight that you've been through, nothing you've had to deal with. God said, I'm getting ready to take it, put it together and cause it to work for your good. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. And so... When you have a real father like you, Bishop Jakes, mm -hmm. not only speaking in my life, not only speaking to your sons and your daughters directly, mm -hmm. but also when you stand on the platform and when you have these classes and mm -hmm. these courses like we'll have in our leadership conference, it's, it's life transformational mm -hmm. because it's real. Absolutely. It's a real experience. It's mm -hmm. not some typed up manuscript. It's no. not some breakfast, some little dinner where we get together and wear big hats. It's where we deal right. with real issues. Right, mm -hmm. right. And that's what having a father has done in my life. Somebody that can supervise my vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's Love what it. it's done for me, Dad. When you start, give God a praise. This is good stuff. Thank you, Jesus. When you start talking about leadership, I think that people who see the broadcast or they hear us preaching, they think, oh, we're going to a, a preaching right. marathon. Right. Oh. But this is really a sharing opportunity yes. to get behind the scenes, to really get to the nuts and bolts. My, the generation before me, they died with all of their know-how oh. locked inside of it. Come on, Bishop. And I think I want to die empty. Everything mm. I ever yes. learned, everything he ever taught me, I told God, if you teach me anything, I'm going to tell it. Yeah. Come on. Give and it shall be given yeah. unto you vision. again. Give yes. and it shall be given unto you again. Yes. And so I always empty out as he exposes me, not only to what is in me, but to other people. Yes, yes sir. You know, when you start talking about leadership, and I heard Matthew Ashimalua in London preaching so powerfully, and I invited him to come, Incredible. my Nigerian brother, to come down and to pour into God's people because he's got a word to yes, say. Yes, sir. When you start talking about John Maxwell, the guru on come leadership. On, yes. I said, come on and pour into us because there's going to be some hungry people who don't want to spend four or five times getting it wrong before they get come it on. right. Come on, Bishop. When, when you really recognize that a young man moving into the responsibility of leadership and your schedule is busy, then you could be off someplace preaching. Yes, sir. Uh, during the leadership conference. What makes you say no to a revival and yes to an opportunity to bring you and your staff to be trained? Well, uh, I think the, the the personal side of it is the key because, and we have, we have some other things that we do uh, and your ministry does as well. You have the Pisca experience, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you have uh, Project Gideon. Yes, yes. And, and all of these are set up 
to get us all into this leadership environment. And what happens in those experiences, that exposure gets on my staff. Because mm. I come back from the conference, whether it's Pisca yeah. <laughs> or it's PG, I come back all fired up and my staff's looking at me like, what in the world? Right, yeah. right, exactly. But when they come to leadership, they get the training. Yes. They get, see, I know that it takes time and work to mm. build anything great. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I don't want to say, hey, I want to be Bishop T.D. Jakes. I want to be Shane Perry. Right. But I need everything I can get from somebody that's been there. The problem that we've had in the church is we're trying to get advice from people who's never been where we're going. <coughs> come on. Come and on. you got to connect with somebody that's been somewhere, that has accomplished something. Mm -hmm. You don't need hungry fathers in this time period. Right. You need people that, you know, Bishop, I, I, the best way I can look at it, yeah, we got starving fathers oh begging, begging when the fathers should be pouring out. Mm -hmm. And and I think what I did with you, Bishop, we we sat down for for uh, breakfast. I actually flew to have breakfast with you. I was that serious about getting it. Yes. I was that serious. And um, I kind of felt like the Seraphonician woman. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a man, but I felt like the Seraphonician, Seraphonician woman. Seraphonician means mixed race. She was mm -hmm. uh, Syrian and Phoenician or Greek Canaanite. And it's interesting <coughs> because if you really look at that story, Jesus was trying to take a break. Mm -hmm. yes. He went there because it's a Gentile area. Mm -hmm. yes. He knew that the covenant wouldn't allow him at that time to minister to Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So he went to the coast of Tyre and Sidon, mm -hmm. which is a beach area. Mm -hmm. He went and rented a beach house, mm -hmm. went in and said, I'll have no man to know it. Mm -hmm. Put his boys at the door mm -hmm. and said, I'm going to stay in here. Leave me alone. That's why I came in. Here comes this Gentile Canaanite woman mm -hmm. hollering for Jesus. Yeah, yeah, Now, yeah. what I love about this is the Bible says first she cried, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but crying didn't work. Mm -hmm. no. And the reason why crying doesn't work, because really, you only have 24 hours to do that. Right, right. Psalms 30 and 5 says, "His anger endureth but for a moment in his favor's life. Mm -hmm. Weeping may endure for a night, mm -hmm. but joy comes in the morning. You got 24 hours to, to cry about what you got going on. <laughs> then you got to tell your problem to pack their bags. You got it 24 hours. I love yeah. And joy is coming. Psalms 126 and 1 said, mm -hmm. they that sow in tears shall reap Deep in joy. In joy. And so, so crying won't move him. Then the Bible says that he wor she worshiped. Mm -hmm. And everybody gets excited. Oh, she worshiped. Well, well worship is all about God. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Praise deals with past blessing, mm -hmm. present or future blessing. Mm -hmm. It can be prophetic. It can be past. But worship is all about God. Mm -hmm. And so worship is misappropriated when you need something activated by your faith. Come on. That's not the time to worship. That's the time to praise like you already got it. Uh -huh. That's another message for another time. So, so worship didn't work. So I was wondering why when she said to Jesus, when he called her a dog, he said, yeah, but even the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from the master. Mm -hmm. Why did this move him? Mm -hmm. why, did it, why did it bring him to a place to say that she had great faith? Mm -hmm. Well, I looked at these two words. I looked at great faith, and I juxtaposed it with little faith. Mm -hmm. Aliagopistios in the Greek. Mm -hmm. It means to be incredulous. Mm -hmm. It means to have no faith at all. Mm -hmm. Now, we know this is impossible because the Bible says every man has a measure of faith, mm -hmm. but that's for salvation. Mm -hmm. There are some things in our lives that we have not built our faith in. Right. I mean, you may have prosperity down, but you're sick as a dog. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you got healing down, but you ain't got no money. Mm -hmm. Third John 2 said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in health, even as thy soul prosper. God trying to get it all together. But, but the point is that if you juxtapose those terms, you have great faith. Great faith. Which is megapistius in the Greek. Mm -hmm. The first translation means to reach beyond providential borders. Come on. Which means, and this is what I did with you, Bishop. I said, Bishop, I'm, I'm about to turn 40. I, I ain't got 20 years to get what you got in you. <laughs> right. I, I need some stuff right now. Right now. And I'm going for it. Right now. And what she said to Jesus is, I know you're not sitting here for me. I know you can't help me. Mm -hmm. I know it's illegal for you to help me. Mm -hmm. But you're going to die on the cross in the future, and you're going to be resurrected from the dead. It's going to happen. So I'm going to use my faith to reach beyond the cross, mm -hmm. Come grab on. a hold of the future covenant, <laughs> and pull it in to my right now. Yeah. I want to tell somebody out there tonight, you've been struggling with some things in your life. You've been wrestling with some things in your life. And the mm -hmm. reason why you need to get to this leadership conference is because some things that would take you 20 years, when you start hearing this information coming from John Maxwell, mm -hmm. you start hearing this information pouring out of Bishop, you start hearing this information coming from all these leaders, God said you're going to grab a hold of some things that would take 20 years and pull 
pull them in to you right now. Now, Glory. I got to quit, but the last <laughs> translation of that word is to get loud, uh -huh. which means God doesn't bless quiet folks. Uh -huh. He blesses people that don't mind getting, giving God a praise for what they believe is already done. Well done. And that's why I come to leadership, because I want it, yeah. and I want it right now. Glory to God. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I could spend all day talking to you about this. If if you're on, if you're watching us right now, I want you to take advantage of the opportunity. If you're a pastor or a leader, or even if you're a leader in corporate America and you want to have your skills sharpened, I want you to register for the Pastor Leadership yes. Conference. It's not far away. It's coming up in Orlando, and we're going to have a great time. For the rest of you, while your pastors are are sharpening themselves so that you can get the bread as it is being passed out. For the rest of you, I want you to get in your mind, we've got an event coming up called Mega Fest. Mega Fest. It's going to be absolutely Woo! incredible. Hey, wait. In, in fact, there, there are some of our members up there with Mega Fest yes, t-shirts on. Yes, sir. Amen. We are busy getting ready for what I believe is going to be a most blockbuster, phenomenal experience that's really going to be something for your family yes. so, that, so that all of you can walk into the realm of faith and have a spiritual experience and be bonded to God and bonded to each other. Yes. I, in fact, in a minute, I'm going to tell you something special that we're going to offer something for else? you. Yeah, we got something special. Mm. We, got some, we got some goodies. We got some goodies. No, you don't get a car. You don't get a car. You don't get a car. But, but we do have something good that we're going to share with you in just a minute. Uh, but I want you to see this clip about Megafest. It's an experience you will not want to miss. Thank you for coming and being a part of this. Awesome. We love it. Don't you just love awesome. it? Take a look at this. Megafest is back with something for the entire family, plus all the events you've come to love and enjoy all in one place at one time. Inspiration, entertainment, and empowerment, including Woman Thou Art Loosed, featuring Bishop T.B. Jakes, Mrs. Sarita Jakes, Sarah Jakes Roberts, Joyce Meyer, Christine Kane, Pastor Cheryl Brady, and more. Manpower, featuring T.B. Jakes, Bishop Teeter Bismarck, and Dr. R.A. Vernon, and other guests. Mega Kids, Mega Youth, Plus Concerts, Comedy Show, and the Faith and Family Film Festival. Dallas, Texas, August 19th through 23rd. Register today at mega-fest.com. It's more than a festival, it's an experience. Hallelujah. It is more than a festival, 